Uh, good evening, folks. How's things? And we're having a bit of trouble here on my end of it anyway. I, I can't hear what you guys are saying or if you are saying anything. But um, look, I'm sure we'll, we'll play on anyway. And um, basically just what tonight is about, it's basically just having a discussion and getting you guys just to have a discussion with each other. Um, and we'll do that over a series of questions and slides to come. Um, I know the last thing people want to do is stuck on a presentation for an hour or so on a, on a Wed Zealand. So we, we, we get through it quick enough, guys, but I want you to try and get as much out of it as you possibly can that you can bring into, you know, your your coaching side of things. Um, so just give you just a brief introduction about myself. Uh, some of you know me, some of you might not know me, but uh, my name is Sean Hand. I'm from the Curly Club. I'm GDA for South Loud now for almost a year and a half um, involved in the five clubs around the region and um, seven schools in that region so that the the most important thing about that for you guys is that you know we have Harristown and we have Tenure School and obviously your club so you know that that's my main focus for when I'm dealing with you guys and um, what 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 I've been doing recently and um, what the club is coming down and taking sessions and you know giving coaches a bit of fresh air you know to take a step back maybe pick up a thing or two um in their own session but you know as craig has probably said to you already um us gdas are kind of swaying away from that sort of side of things where we want to give the coach the you know we want to pass them the baton you know rather than us going and coach 20 kids and not send them for weeks on end why can't we go and maybe coach 10 to 15 coaches where you know, each team would probably have 15 to 20 kids. So how many kids are we actually affecting then by just bringing the coaches into it and, and you know, giving the coaches the opportunity to learn? So that's that's what we're going and that, that will be our main focus um, moving forward. So you, you have spoken on, on this. I know Craig was saying you've spoken this on a while for a while now and, you know, it's, it's great that there's committees coming in and, and people are, you know, putting their shoulders to the wheel. But, planning is is so important okay so we're just looking at this now what is the coach pathway so it's a development plan for coaches to allow them personal progression over the season now i know if if you look back on on years gone by you know why do people come become coaches and uh, possibly because they've got kids involved and they're at the pitch one evening and they got dragged into it and they're there ever since okay that that's that's the way it's been in my club that's the way I, it's been talking to coaches throughout my time as a GDA. So we, we kind of want to, as a, as a county, um, we kind of want to move away from that. We want coaches to be, you know, to be showing the incentive to, to take the initiative and, and get on board and, and, you know, bring the standards up across the whole county. And and that starting point is at the club. So you have already talked about implementing the tourist pathway. We, we'd speak about that a wee bit more in depth. Uh, mentoring and then the new structures within the club so you're looking at your manager your head coach and your assistant coaches now we'll probably be talking more so about the head coach this evening so just before i delve into a bit of a spiel uh, i just want you guys craig will probably put you into breakout groups but what i want you to do just have a two minute discussion that's all it's going to be on what you think a head head coach is what you understand about the role and what you think the role should be. So Craig will just throw you into a breakout room for two or three minutes and we'll come back. Perfect, Sean. Okay, so folks, we're going out into rooms now like we've done before. There's your question right in front of you. Of um, Basically, what is it to you and how is it important? So at the end, um, we're going to get as well just to inform us what and what answer okay so the rooms are starting to open now and you'll go into them any problems as well folks use the chat box at the side
Am I stuck here again, Craig? Am I? Oh, John, I was meant to say that it's your email address. I think. Can you hear me okay? Just in and out a bit. Yeah, it's it's your email address is not allowing us to it's whatever restriction you have on your email address, it's not allowing us to put you into allowing us to put you into a group. My email address. For some reason. I don't know like what email address you're using. Yeah, that's what's telling me here. Gmail. This time it's not even showing up. Yeah, this time it's not even you're not in a group. Well last time it was and it was restricting me from putting you into one. Yeah. If that makes sense. Uh, I have to be honest, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't, uh, I wouldn't know how to manage that. Strange, I've never know. seen it done like that before. Do you have any idea, Crouchy, how to do that, do you? Say that again there, John. Do you have any idea how to amend that, do you? No, it's not, like, it's not even, it's not even, to be honest, I forgot about it from the last time, but I remember the last time it wasn't allowing me. To me, you can see here is the only participant that's not in a Right. I moved into it like it's not even telling me you're not in the group where last week it was like can you just see everything normal in front of you like as if you're in the chat as normal um so i've minimized your screen i just see the breakout question and i see myself yourself and sean yeah. and in a group that's all i don't know it didn't know it restricted me last time so i remember looking at last wednesday like i could see your name but i couldn't click on you know what i mean where everyone yeah Click on it and move to a group. It's very strange. I, I actually must. I'm going to write that down so we forget to get it. Open language settings. I don't. I don't know how to change it, Crouchy. That's the problem. I, I don't know how to change it. So. Yeah, I'm going to you know what. Just for this week, John, leave it, and I'm going to find out why that is because I've never seen it happen before. For last week, it was telling me it was the email. I'm going to open these rooms. I'm going to bring them all back in. All right. Essentially, I think it's going to make them get progress on the day. Okay, folks. Back in here now. The the breakout rooms are starting to close. I'll just give it a couple more seconds. There's one room that's still, and I think they're all closed. So your question was, what is a hedge? Oh, hang on, can we left wrong? Um, what is a hedge coach? What do you understand? And okay, so group one is Liney's group. So Liney group group at line does someone want to come forward and explain to us what yeah i'll, I'll, I'll give the, the feedback uh craig uh so yeah some very good discussions yeah. in our group i suppose a couple of key things are coming out obviously that the the planning of the training sessions and um, that very important that that planning working with your uh, management team 
about, uh, you know, I suppose in a couple of weeks in advance. So we were touching, I suppose, a little bit on periodization there. Um, very important that uh, you're delegating jobs. So obviously feeding back into our idea of the, the head coach and the assistant coach, that it's not just one person doing all the work, that it's a, a shared uh, a shared experience. Um, that I suppose you set the tone for the players, that they're, you're, you're the person that kind of, is dealing with the players a lot of the time in groups that you're, um, I suppose, uh, like we spoke on last week, that enthusiasm is coming from you, that, that that positive environment is being created by you. And that very important that as part of the head coach, that your management team and the people around you are sharing the same vision, that there's not conflict. And uh, I suppose they were some of the key kind of key things that we said, but probably the planning of sessions was, was probably the biggest thing we talked about. Okay, brilliant. brilliant. What we're looking to get at. Um, group two, someone to come up and speak there is Joe Wall. Watch this group and Yvonne. Who is someone in the speaker in that group wants to come forward and just give a brief breakdown? Hi, Craig. Hey, Craig. It's just come oh. Go on, head. No, go on, head. Hey, sure, Vaughn. Yeah, no, sorry. I was just waiting to see who, who came in last. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, Craig, we were just talking. We were just talking away there. A very similar point. So myself and Damien were talking initially about um, the role itself and what was going to entail and really just as a support for the manager and trying a kind of more clear or kind of uh, delegation of roles, you know. Uh, Joe then came in with a really good point about like how good of a prospect it is but ultimately that each group is going to need a certain number of volunteers to make this happen you know and then lastly then Owen Lynch was on he was saying he made a really good point about the benefits like of exactly what the guy said before the clarity of purpose and what we're doing if we manage to make it work you'd have a really clear delegation of of roles and that can only be a benefit really like you know right the way down to the from the manager down to the head coach down to the assistant coaches everybody be very clear in what they're doing so that was really it, Craig. Brilliant, Cormac. Thank you very much. Yeah, one hundred percent. We move on to room three. Room three is Patrick Sullivan and Brian Halligan's group. So if someone wants, wants like there and just give us a quick break as we're at. Yeah, uh, Craig. I'll come in then. Um, so we we good chat, but we spoke a lot about I suppose. What our experiences of head coaches were um, across the across the club, and then maybe just towards the end of the conversation, started to turn our attention to, you know, what sort of structures would be would be the best way to go about it. What sort of tasks would be um, best for a, for a head coach or head manager to 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 look at, and um, or head coach. And uh, I suppose a lot of things that were said already, um, but you know, people kind of you know. Um, Having that, having sort of the manager having the bird's eye view of everything, and the head coach looking after the the sort of um, training sessions, the coaching, uh, the coaching uh, methods, uh, periodization, and all, all everything that was mentioned earlier on. Brilliant, Paddy. Thank you. And uh, room four is the last. So that is Ollie's room and Stewie. So if someone wants to come forward there and give us a oh, yeah. quick breakdown. Um, I don't know if, if Fergus or I think it's Julie could, could hear us stable, but um, we uh, we come up with uh, coordinating training sessions, coaching plan, what's the focus areas, key coaching points for each session, um, the, intent, the intent of the training drill and supporting other coaches and coordinating with them. They're the main points. Yep, 100%. Um, yeah, so all that is there. About Ray in the if it's not wonderful either. Um there seems to be a couple of people that's struggling with their internet today, I wonder that and or not really sure. Yeah, look, that's a hundred percent all there is just get talking and get thinking. So the role of a coach is clear and um we all understand exactly the role of a coach basically okay so i'm going to get you okay on guys so in. hopefully that brought up a bit of a uh, discussion among yourselves now i got a bit of feedback there of craig and, and some very very good answers you know the plan of sessions uh working with the manager 
you know, delegation of roles. You had that a couple of times, and um, the content of sessions, and that'll just bring us on then to the next slide where the head coaches are responsible for the weekly on-field development of players. Okay, so the head coaches they must be enthusiastic towards coaching, a willingness to attend workshops and seminars throughout the year, as well as encourage others to attend. Okay, you don't want you don't want to end up in a situation which was probably very common in clubs all across the country, not only in Loud or whatever it is, but you know, there's always that one person who kind of takes everything upon themselves, whether they're made to do it, whether it's it's entirely their own choice. You know, sometimes that doesn't work because there's a miscommunication, there's a forgetfulness that could creep into it. So I think to have someone, you know, to assist others. Okay, so we said that our structure was the manager, the head coach and the assistant coach. Okay, so if we have them working in unison, okay, especially for their own team, you know, there won't be mixed messages, there won't be miscommunication, okay, they have a bit of a structure, they can sort their own routine. And it's important then that we go into the likes of session planning, okay, there's there's no point turning up to a session and going, oh, jeez, I'm asking me working, you know, nine, ten hours today, you know, I couldn't get two minutes to myself to plan a session, I'll just throw out a lock of footballs and lock of cones, I'll just let them kick about for 45 minutes, okay, now, I, I, I watched a clip um, not so long ago. It was Brendan Rogers, and he was speaking about how players players know when a session isn't organised. You know, if a, if a coach comes out and he's got his, you know, his square set up here for a conditioning game, or he's got his square set over there for warm up, they go, well, at least it, there's a bit of thought put into this, and it's not sort of, you know, half arsed where, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna get something out of this. OK, and then that leads us then into player development. OK, the players can develop then because they're in an environment where everything is planned, it's organised. OK, so then there's no time spent, you know, picking up cones, moving cones, you're set up, you're structured and you can get more time one to one, whatever it is with each player. OK, your sessions have to be age appropriate. OK, there's, there's no way you're going to do mass running with the under 10s. OK. You know that does, just doesn't make sense. Okay, you're not going to be using tackling grids with to know the nursery. Okay, so it has to be age appropriate. But now that's not saying that you can't go and challenge, and you know, you know, try and challenge and and maybe bring in certain exercises that you know you can maybe regress to suit players that you know the further they go down the line to be able to do the the main exercise. OK, consistent upskilling. So that that's a big one then for the head coach and the coaches around them. OK. I think it was 32, 32 names in for the the foundation that's planned for the end of the month. OK, like you, you, you can't just get coaches in and, and just have them dwelling on the foundation. OK, you need to, to keep upskilling. So that means once it's the foundation, well, maybe push in a couple of years' time and get the award one. Okay, upskill themselves, pick up new ideas. Maybe then again, go for the award two. Okay, again, you're progressing and always on the rise. Okay, because if 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 you get caught or you get stuck in a rut and you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, you know, the the player retention rate, you know, it gets harder for you because the players are are, are going to know what's coming for training or what's happening. You know, they're not going to be excited to turn up training. Okay, so you have to keep that variation in this in the sessions as well okay and that comes from upskilling and learning new things and being able to tweak some of your old ideas and maybe just freshen them up a bit and then we have a support group now Craig will probably go on about this a wee bit more as we as we go through the um the presentation but you know a support group that's your head coach your manager your assistant coach okay other coaches from other age groups okay we're all the one club. We're trying to get a shoulder against the wheel and push in the same direction. So shared ideas. Okay, if you have an idea or if you need ideas, there's no harm to to reach out to maybe other coaches of of other other groups. Maybe get sessions off them. And we speak again about the shared folders. You know, it, it's vital these things. You know, are being shared. We're all in it for the same outcome. Okay, we want to progress. We want our players to progress. Okay, so if we share our our ideas, we'll have a bigger pool to choose from rather than someone saying, "Well, these are my ideas." You know, I thought of these, um, and not not willing to share them. Okay, that that ends up being an ego thing, and 
you know, you, you don't want that because that will cause friction uh, as you move down the line. Um, so it's important to keep that support group, keep communicating, keep asking the question of yourself and keep asking the question of other coaches. And then we go into periodization. And we'll probably go a wee bit more in-depth into this one. Like periodization, periodization it's, a, it's a planned long-term variation of the volume and the intensity of the training. Okay, so you don't want to prevent overtraining. You want to promote, you know, optimal performance at a desired time. So here's just an example of of a chart. Okay, so it's split up into three different cycles. Okay, so you've got macro cycle, which is probably your year long or your season long. Okay, chart. Okay, so what 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 do you want to do in the first four months? Okay, what are you going to do in the middle third? Okay, and what are you going to do then in the final third? So how how are you going to split it up? Okay, what are you going to prioritize throughout that season? Okay, then you have the meso- mesocycle, which is a medium term. Okay, so it's about several weeks to months. And then what that would probably that would probably fall into the category of say if you're with a minor side, so your championship. Okay, how are you going to prepare them? Okay, that they're peaking at the right time. Okay, there's no point doing, for example, there's no point doing hill sprints in pre-season okay so i say early january okay and then by the time you're coming to championship you're still doing hill sprints okay there has to be a development along the way and then you have the micro cycle so you have the short length of time so there's probably you're after coming through the group stages of a championship okay now you're, you know you're coming into the business end of it okay so what what's the plan how are you going to you know how are you going to get the best out of your players so it's important to have this sort of structure in front of you that you know you can maybe relate back to it so we start in January so we might relate back to it in May and just go well did we cover what we needed to cover in February did we do what we needed to do in March okay are we at the best possible place for us to achieve what we want what we set out to achieve at the start of the year okay and I think that's it's vital that if you can relate back to something that's there okay you've planned all this at the start of the year okay you haven't changed it, so you can go back and just say, well, look, at the start of the year, we said by June that we have a certain level of fitness. I don't think we have it, okay? So then you have to, you know, look at yourself, look at what went what, what went right, what went wrong, how did this happen? Okay, so you're all constantly asking questions, and it's a, it's a great tool to have for that reason. So then we move on to the shared folders, and I just might let um, Craig just to go a wee bit more in depth into this um with it with it being such a, a powerful tool to have in the club i'll just let Pe- uh, craig go on on that one okay guys so um and i would apologize for the, the quality of internet that we're, and the problems we're having tonight if if it's something that is causing a massive can hear us we will have the presentation and and we've no problem uh but again um over the coming weeks so don't don't worry if, if it's brilliant you can't fully hear or grasp grasp what we're talking about okay so um the shared folder is basically the stuff before and hopefully at this stage um we would have all kind of kind of had a good look at it now and and a work in progress. This is the bones of 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 the idea, uh, but basically, it, it's the kind of thing we we get out of this what we put into it. So the more sessions and the more actions we get with this shared folder, the more we're going to get out of it. Okay. So in the slide number one there, the player pathway session. So basically, when you click into it, you'll all you'll have to do then folder on slide um it who you have basically your age groups okay so from nursery to 18 and below them folders we have um template so them, that template is basically what we want the head coaches getting in so printing out the template and filling it in so us via whatsapp or email with your session done out now you might if you want to do four a day or four a week of 
or four every six months. That's fine. Whatever you can contribute to this, we're willing to put an egg under people's head and say you have to do this. Basically, you get out of this what you put into it, okay? And the work you put in there is the club in the future, all right? So, as I said, yeah, age groups, and it's all based on tourists and the age appropriate coaching. Number three, then, so when you click into an age group, what you have then is your own, your tactical, your team play, your technical, and your physical fit. So, go down to the, the, the card here that's also in this folder. This one we see in front of us. Um, this one you kind of see in front of us is if you look at the outside, um, it tells you them exact folders. So your tactical prowess, your physical fitness, and your team play is all around the outside. Of us. But that stays the same. Them four topics stay the same through every age group we every age group we have okay that's why these folders in our coaching shared folder is on every age question we do is going to fall under a head so if you look at the tour for instance and it says technical skill okay in technical skill that's your handling kicking pickups and your basic movements and that skills go through all the age groups the content of a kick is different at the age groups. Okay, so a kick at four years old is taught differently and than it would be at minor level. Okay, and that's what these cards are going to have. Age, all right. So, else I suppose on that card, if you know one of these skills, or if you if you coach technical skill ninety percent of the time and tactic. 10% of the time and the rest is zero. We're not developing the rounded player. Okay, so ignoring certain parts of this, we're not developing the player and allowing the player. Okay, so this song speaks about peer and um, this appropriate coaching at the right times of the year. So go and have a look at these tourist cards that's in the, that's in the slides. So moving on from that, so what you see then when you kick to the, uh, we'll say for instance, tactical prowess, this is what is, this is going to be, it, basically. so when you click into uh, number four there, have is your template, your handwritten template that our coaches are going to, that's going to explain exactly what every drill is, and then the videos, Autumn is what I'm going to do in Liney and Ollie because we've access to this tactical and then basically you can click into a short four or five second video you can see the actual session that's happening in front of you so the players are going to you're going to understand what's happening because you're going to have the written template to refer back to okay I have started this myself I have probably about 14 sessions on it and match but it takes a little bit of time to work with all right okay. and it takes a little okay, okay guys so just of, to go a bit, bit more in depth we need everybody to the, the tourist cards or the, the o2 model some of you might know it as the the three t's or the three p's so the three t's are technical proficiency tactical awareness team play and the three p's will be psychological focus physical fitness and playing facts. Okay, so just kind of just briefly just outline the card itself. Okay, so if we go into technical skills, you've got your kicking, your handling, your pickup and your movement. Your physical fitness is your running, your jumping, your your ABCs, RJTs um, and coordination. Team play is going into then, you know, understanding player movements, okay, Stop them bunching, okay. Small sided games, keep them. I know it's it's probably hard with, with such big numbers, but keeping it to 2v2, 4v4, and you know, making sure all the players are getting maximum touches. Uh, tactical prowess would be their decision making, okay. So that works with like you know, fun games or target games, 
And then we have the psychological focus, which is developing, you know, the, the skills outside of football, so listening skills, attention, okay, and also well being as well. That that's that's a that's an important one. Because like if we if we were to look at the tourist card, you know, it, it players require many different skills to perform to their max potential. So they also like they have to employ these and 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 really utilize them at, at match tempo. So then you're coming into like your that's your technical uh, proficiency. And then like you know in certain situations they're they're gonna need to weigh up and make the best decision. So that they that comes into your tactical prowess. And then you gotta do it while anticipating movement of other players. So so you're understanding then your team play then. So all of these should be developed and you know mm. integrated with physical fitness, psychological focus and playing facts okay so like the easiest way to explain how to incorporate all these into one small paragraph is like fun games from fun games can help develop the characteristics of tactical prowess team play and it should be a major element of a lot of training no matter what the age is okay so if you're training a nursery team or even right up to a senior team you know you have to keep it you have to keep it fun you know just because you say you take over a senior team, you know, it doesn't have to be fun. If, if if people are learning, okay, at high intensity, you know, understanding new skills, understanding different movements, okay, it can all be a bit of fun. It's not a mil- militarized where you're coming in and you must run 15 laps to get fit, okay? Fun games, you can get fit. Fun games, you can get you can get the ball, okay? It, it It's how you can, you know, how you can adapt your own coaching styles, in, into that so I just want to ask you another question get you to break out into your groups again just on a scale of one to five how would you rate each of the elements of the O2 model um, and how, how would they be prioritised for say an under 14 player so your tactical proficiency your tactical awareness your team play your psychological focus your physical fitness and your playing facts so I'll let you work away just for a couple of minutes there. Get that discussion going again. How 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 would you prioritize these? So there's your question. I'm going to start the breakout rooms now. Folks, is there everybody in a the room there, or is it just John? No. Myself and your your dad's just gone there. I think is he? No, Dinger's there still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Verona Kearney. Do you want to just discuss? Who's there, folks? Um, I know you probably can't hear Hi. me, but have a wee chat. There's Al's about the question. Hello. Um, yeah. Who am I talking to? Dinger yeah. here, anyway. Hi, Dinger. How are you? Okay, well done, yes, sir. Grant. I think John is there as well. Are you there, John? Yeah. I'm here too, yeah. How are it's you? Just the three of us, is it? Yeah, I think it's the three of us, yeah. I hope you got the question, but they didn't. Um, it's there in front of us on the scale of one to five. Right, can you see the question there element in front of, of the O2 model? I have to say, I haven't got the O2 model in front of me. <laughs> have you got um, the O2 model? So basically, John, you have your I technical just... skill. Yeah. It's hard, it's, I don't know. I find it hard to 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 to, to prioritise there. I suppose the physical fitness. 
is going to be is not going to be at the same level as a as um as a senior team, for instance. Uh, team play I would is think very that fourteen with, with girls and boys. They're going through hormonal stages, so I would prioritize yeah. psychological mm. and well-being. Probably high up. Yeah, you're probably right there. Yeah, uh, could but could you match the whole lot of them in into one because if they're if they're if they're if they're, if they're, if they're how would you say physically fit and all that it kind of blends into one, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. but I would think fourteen-year-old physical fitness would be probably. I would say t- they're only lear- still learning the skills, so probably tact- tactical or technical skills would be st- you're still trying to improve. Yeah, I'd say your 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 know. your technical skills. Uh, I suppose your basic skills should be well developed at that stage. They should really be well developed. Yeah, they should be well developed at fourteen. Mm-hmm. Now that doesn't mean you, there's not scope for improvement. The core, the core or keeping, skills, John. Anyway, the core skills. The core skills. Be there. Yeah, yeah, they should be there. Um, yeah, so your tactical would come probably, and then f- as in they should be learning like the running off the ball and the decision making would be coming yeah. because your technical skills will have started to develop. Yeah, they'll have to. They should. They'll have to know about time and runs and kick into space and leave in space. That's that's when it, that that really should be coming up into 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 a, an area for them, I suppose. So team play and tactical play, I'd put them both very high. Technical skills, it's very hard to mark down technical skills, but I would have thought that they should be well advanced at that stage so that you're you're not focusing on them to the same degree as you would have when they're 10, say. And then the physical yeah, fitness but... aspect of it, is it will come into play when you're looking at your tactical prowess. I suppose what I meant earlier on about your physical fitness is that you're not going to go crazy with, like, with, a, with a crowd of 14, 16 year olds and start putting them on long distance runs or mountain yeah. mad shuttle runs yeah. or something like that, you know. That's what I mean by that. So it's hard to know, one to five. And then if you're doing the others, the physical should come into them and be incorporated in them it'll, anyway. It'll, it'll be part of it, yeah. yeah. So it's going it's to yeah. fall into it. But yeah. I wouldn't be yeah. doing, I wouldn't necessarily concentrate on something physical fitness. Now, I have to say skill, fit, speed, I would, I would, uh, I would put into the skill zone though, so that I you I I do speed work without a ball, but it's speed work. It's not stamina work. It's speed work because just to get the yeah. Moment. But an awful lot of fourteen and fifteen year olds nowadays they're not as fit as we were. Like they're just all sitting around playing. Yeah. Place station yeah. and all yeah, that. And the boxes. only time they're getting out to do any physical exercises is uh, the uh, when they come yeah. off training. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I, and when you put it like that, you're, you're, you know, it's it's valid, I suppose. It's very difficult. What is the standard 14-year-old as well? Like, you know, there's all different rates. Yeah, you'd have a good 14-year-old and then you'd have a weak 14, you know. Yeah. There's yeah, a big... Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know, it's like it's, it's like everything, maybe when you, you're looking at individuals, you, you might change, alter what you, you were thinking rather than, you know, like the, the standard 14-year-old player, I suppose. Does that kick back into what I do? We're talking about a few minutes ago with the head coach. Yeah, of splitting up, and then you might have to readjust. Yeah, exactly. The five because yeah, yeah, it might yeah. suit everyone. No. You know, it's it's Are it's we? it's very individual. Well, not just totally all individual, but you could have a group of five or six, just not, and then you could have another five or six that's fit, that have fitness is a lot better than the other ones. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you'd have to change your for certain yeah, groups. Yeah, you'd have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a you'd hard see that even actually at, at a younger level, at twelve, you'd still have different levels, and you might do an exercise that helps fitness, but it's skill orientated as well. Yeah. But it might benefit you. They might have someone in players in particular in mind. So it like it, it all depends on the individual player, I think. And it's about yeah. as you said if, there. I think you were you you t- touching on. The agility one is very big, I think. Yeah, hundred percent. If you get the yeah. agility no, right, a lot of everything else comes into into play, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah, I think your physical fitness has to be incorporated into the others. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 
if you can do the whole lot, you can nearly throw a blanket over the whole lot of them if you, with that physical fitness and, and, as you said, incorporate the whole lot into one. Yeah. Not, not all, all the time, but to get them up to a certain physical fitness end of it and then break out and then concentrate more on the technical skills and team play. Like team play and tactical fairness kind of blend into one, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, I, 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 I'd yeah. agree with you there. I'd agree with you there. And I think the technical yeah. skills, not that you're forgetting about them, they should be touched on in every session, but every they're session, probably not yeah, at the, every yeah but they're, they're not at the same pitch as what you were. Yeah, like as a four and six-year-old and yeah. then a 14-year-old is a big difference. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. yeah that's it. And, and then again, I'll go back, speed for me is a skill, so I would take speed out of physical fitness and I'd be using that as a, as a skill. So rather yeah, than... For sh- not everyone's fast, John. You were fast. Like, there's not everyone was fast when they were playing. Just no, but I'm, yeah. spe- to, de- to develop that, like, so you might have someone who may be not that fast, but if you do a, some work with them on speed, you know, I'm, I'm, like, it's not it's not going to be long, it's short, runs, not tiring. Uh, if you do that, they will get faster. You might oh, turn yeah, them into you saying yeah. bolter yeah. and like that, but yeah. they will get faster. Yeah, I, agree I, too, I think. Yeah. So yeah. if you take that and put them into, in, I'd be teaching that as a skill. So you sometimes if you introduce the football, sometimes the football is an attraction. You can get them to run and sprint towards the football. Oh, yeah. yeah. But if you put them yeah. with the ball, they're maybe not getting maximum speed. And that's that's why I would kind but of. But I do think I do think a lot of these are individualized. You could change them around. What would be a priority for one person mightn't be a priority for exactly. another. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's very hard to put numbers on what you think would be a priority when it it's not it has to be t- around the child or adult whoever yeah i, I agree it I think it, I think player it depends centered on like it depends on what group you have in front of you yeah and the only one that i would knock down and this is kind of is i'd knock down the technical because i would anticipate at 14 that they should have that they should have the basics and then it's just a matter of refreshing slub, some development but refreshing yeah, great. Mm. Great. But like even if you're looking at you're looking at four to six, seven to nine, like four to six, you kind of just bit, to me in the nursery thing that I haven't been involved in any of it. But you start off at one or two skills. You don't overload them. Yeah. Just I'd slowly even, bring I, them up. I'd, I'd, I'd actually even go so far. Another two skills. I'd even go so far as to say, Dinger, that you're in in the nursery, the agility and coordination probably take more precedence over your kicking yeah. or technical That's skills it, yeah. and just so maybe maybe you're skills. actually the four to six your physical fitness if it's fallen into that category might be more important and then when you well, get you, to six to seven eight nine ten it's skills based in my book it's skills based and well, if, you, te- if you give a four to six year old a skill to do one skill you and like you, you won't even think about it you just do it yeah and then mm-hmm. moving into the next year he has that skill already in him so yeah, if you go yeah. from a pickup to movement, he's doing the pickup the whole time. He's so used to it, and then he's going into the following, he's going to start moving. So you, you incorporate the two of them into one, and that's two years done of pickup and movement. And yeah. that oh, whole, it's, again, it's the same, the agility can come into it. Yeah. No, 100%. Agree with you. There we go. We can go. We're coming back. Bye. Are we coming back in? Uh, yeah. Bye, Looking confused there, Dinger. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was looking very studious. He looks like a professor yeah, there I'll or something. Yeah, take any better. He must have had a good uh, answer. Okay, that, guys. He wants to say. Oh. No. All the rooms are closed now, and um, we're coming to the end of. Okay, so what's going to happen here is, can you make sure you turn off your cameras and mics again? I'm going to explain what we're going to do now. Okay, guys. So yeah, we spoke about the 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 O2 model. Okay, and just to break it down even more. Okay, like you 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 imagine right that the player. And and we we've, we've gone through this and and some of you may have done so as well. We've gone through something like this, um, in lots of workshops uh, previously. Like if we can imagine that the player is a plant, okay, so the plant and the and the gardener, 
Okay, so the plant requires air, light, heat, water, soil, and protection to grow. Okay, so the gardener or the knows that all of these are needed to, to, to be provided or the plant will die. Okay, so if we're looking at it, the, you know, the gardener knows that too much of any one thing will not be good for the plant. Okay, and will not compensate for too little of another. So it just shows that in, in the same way with this O2 model, you know, outlines that this, the six you know, key ingredients for development of the player, the correct application of the three T's and the three P's will allow the player to grow and fully flourish and develop as a player. So the coach knows that if, if they, like, for talk's sake, if they were to put too much emphasis on psychological focus or physical fitness, you know, the, the players will have a deficiency in, in the other part of the model. So, you know, at, at, different, at, di at different times, you know, it, it may require the player to maybe you know, sway more towards this, but like in equal amounts, I think it, it's very, very important that, you know, the players are experiencing all parts of the O2 model. But the, so that's, that, that comes down then to the coach being aware of this. Okay. So wh which skill or which element to emphasize most um, for that player to, to develop to the max potential. So the integration of the three T's and the three P's, in the right proportions at the right time will will end up resulting in the player being able to fully reach their potential. So like if we break it down and we look all like that, you know, you, you can't just spend one year sessions saying, well, we can't do the pickup and we can't hand pass. So I'm going to spend the next four weeks just doing the pickup and the hand pass. Because then what happens when the players are going down to pick the ball up, Okay, they're looking for a hand pass straight away. So you go into a match, what's going to happen? Ball's going to be on the ground. The player's going to go pick the ball up, hand pass straight away. Okay, because that's all they've known. That's all they've done for the last four to six weeks. Okay, so it, like there's these small examples, you know, to show how important the whole cycle is rather than just focusing solely on one part of it where you think, oh, well, they're not fit enough, so we're just going to run for two or three weeks. Okay, it's important to try and get as many sort of elements of the wheel into each. Okay, so I think Craig has put a um, a question in. So if you can rate each of them, you know, after after going through that there with the plant, like, like I hope that when you're going forward, you'll be able to rate rate each of them. Okay, equally when you're when you're going to bring it towards uh, your session. Okay. Um, that will move us on then to our last slide. Okay, so the club create a structure that does not rely on one individual personnel or such as the manager of a team or the coaching officer. The role is clear on what is to be expected. Personnel can change, but the coaching structure stays the same. Okay, so the coaching structure is created for maximum efficiency and transparency to give the club Neymar a greater chance of su at success. Okay, and that that's that's you know a really strong message there to show that the club is going to be here longer than any of the coaches or players will be. So it's important to have you know a philosophy, a club philosophy, whereas you can go from say an under 10 training right up to the senior training and see that there is a lot of similarities in each of the training sessions because each session is structured Every coach knows their role. They don't know their role. You know, there's communications there. There's avenues where they couldn't go down. They, there's upskilling for them. Okay, every element is there for them to to improve the club as a whole. Okay, and I, and I just want to say again, guys, sorry about the the malfunctions and the technical difficulties, but you know that's just the way it, <laughs> it is today. But if you have any questions, guys, feel free to put them into the text box and I'll try to answer them as best I can.